Welcome back to Wild Treasures. Now the southern ground hornbill has one of the slowest reproduction cycles in the bird kingdom. One of the biggest issues that hornbills have is their slow reproduction rate, with one chick surviving every nine years. This is also another contributing factor to their declining populations. This negative report, however, is also an opportunity for something positive to transpire. The Mabula Ground Hornbill Project has embarked on creating awareness of the birds and the important role they play in our environment. The introduction of artificial nests is also something that will contribute positively with the hope of inducing reproduction. They have also started internship courses with the aim to educate not only those who love nature but the greater public. Um, I decided to be part of the Mabula Ground Hornbill Project because um, I love hornbills and I'm fascinated by them and I want to learn as much as I can about the birds. Um, I've been with the project for the past six months now. So um, I found out about the project at the beginning of last year um, and was really intrigued by the birds in the project and was really hoping to do my master's thesis on the birds themselves um, and that just triggered an interest in me um, and then an opportunity presented itself to come here for the internship um, and yeah it was just a, a no-brainer so I came straight here. So I've been here now for two months um, and signed until the end of the year and then we'll just take it from there. Through the program, misconceptions on these birds are dismissed, while also creating awareness on some of the direct and indirect persecutions they face from humans. The ground hornbill is such an integral part of our culture, and if we don't look after the birds, it also means that we're losing a part of our culture and our tradition that is so rich. Um, so we need to protect the birds for our own culture. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. So you, you learn something new every day, um, but I think something that I'm really learning is that um, birds like the ground hornbill can be a really important flagship species for conservation, um, and that yeah, we can just use uh, a species like that to get the word out about conservation and hopefully inspire people to fall in love with the environment around them um, and yeah, just fall in love with creatures and, and all that they can bring to us. Since being a part of this project, most of the interns can't help but fall in love with these interesting birds. Uh, I love their appearance, they're so beautiful and charismatic and I also love the sound of them early in the morning, uh, just before sunrise. Uh, it's a beautiful way to wake up in Africa. Well, they're just incredible creatures. Um, I think the most fascinating thing for me is their incredibly complex social structure, um, which means that I think we can learn a lot from the birds themselves um, and that there's always more to learn. And then of course their incredible call, which is nothing like any other bird that I've ever heard before. Um, so hearing that noise at dawn every morning is just really something that feeds my soul um, and hopefully will continue to do so. It is estimated that only 1,500 ground hornbills are left in the country, with two-thirds of them living outside of protected areas. So more work needs to be done in order to conserve the species. With only 400 breeding pairs of the southern ground hornbills left, more efforts are needed to help increase their numbers. The Mabulu Ground Hornbill Project has already embarked on harvesting and assisting the second hatch chicks in partnership with various organizations like the Johannesburg Zoo. They do this by taking the second egg and incubating it, or to rescue the second chick and raising it separately, preventing it from starving to death. 
the public can be of great help by getting in touch with organizations like the Mabulu Ground Hornball Project to help relocate the birds should they experience trouble. That 1,500 is individuals and these birds live in these, these complex social groups and so that's actually only one breeding female per group so if we sort of take that number and divide it into groups that's only about 400 breeding females and I think we would hope to get at least another 200 back into the population to say that we've really turned things around um, but for such a long-lived species and with so many threats I think we'd be satisfied if we could just stabilize that number as it is now and not lose any more ground hornbills. I think that we'd call a a satisfactory goal. So we've reintroduced 49 birds over the last, uh, since 1995. Um, unfortunately, it's been a very steep learning curve trying to understand the birds. So originally the hand rearing was done just to, to build ground hornbills that were physically strong, but we're now learning that they have to have all the right behaviors in place. And so as we've gone along, we've got much better at it. And the moment there are now f uh, three ground hornbill groups out uh, in South Africa. Um, and next year we're constructing a specialized hand rearing facility, which means we should be able to get up to releasing three new groups per year. Although the birds can cause damage, especially to windows of schools and houses, it's important that we look at other means of coexisting with them instead of prosecuting them, as they play an important role in our environment. As we are the Mabula Ground Hornbills project, we try and get sightings from every direction that we can because we live in Mabula that is down in Bela Bela and we can monitor all the population that is in South Africa. So anybody that goes out of Kruka National Park and sees the birds, they can then call in the Mabula Ground Hornbill um, project and tell us this is the birds that we saw and we saw how many birds. And also the birds are territorial, so for those people that are around the areas where these birds are and they break their windows, try and cover their windows and then those birds, they will live peacefully with those birds. But a lot of things that people can do for us is send in sightings, then once the sightings are in, then we, it's easier for us to go out and monitor the birds that are out there. With the many challenges these birds face, like habitat loss, which impacts the birds mostly when it comes to breeding and nesting, more creative conservation concepts are required. Um, I think definitely we can be doing a lot more awareness because it's a people problem. Um, it really, people are then the solution for the species. So I think we really need to be going at that a lot harder. Um, I think uh, we've sort of understood the cultural significance of the species now and found that there's this inherent cultural protection and so we need to be working to, to assist that and aid that um, because that is more than we can do on our own where these communities themselves want to protect the ground hornbills. Um, we, we always need uh, sighting records so if people are seeing ground hornbills especially outside of the big protected areas like Kruger National Park so if they're driving on holiday somewhere see birds on the side of the road let us know where uh, what time the date um, and how many birds in that group um, and then obviously financial support or in-kind support. It is vital that conservation efforts like the Mabula Ground Hornbill project continues. My name is Stefani Janssen van Fuhren and it is always a pleasure bringing you another informative episode of Wild Treasures. Till next time, stay blessed. <laughs>